uh, tonight is our last evening meeting because tomorrow uh, by the time we reach there which is only approximate uh, 8 p.m. or so according to our tour guide uh, uh, you all need to refresh yourself by the time you all finish everything some of you already cater your food so by the time you finish it's nine it's a bit too late so tomorrow night there's no meeting so when you get back tomorrow night uh, just rest and have whatever you need and uh, if you need to eat your, your veggies go ahead and uh, prepare for the next morning uh, the whole day uh, prepare for the next morning uh, to wait on the Lord and uh, then the, that evening will be the all night prayer which starts at 8 p.m. and goes right to the next day about 7 a.m. or 8 p.m. Uh, 8 a.m. and uh, so it's a day that you need to prepare yourselves for and I, I will guess that tonight you all had a most wonderful vegetarian meal <laughs> I had a look and I saw so many dishes uh, that's good uh, but some of you I realize are also <laughs> fasting and uh, so those we say they enjoy now and then we enjoy later right so you pay the price now for uh, seeking God and God will bless you even more uh, according to your capacity of course and uh, other little announcements uh, anything else Muiling that you need to inform anybody? Tomorrow 8 a.m. Huh? The breakfast starts at 7. We leave at 8. Okay, breakfast is at 7 a.m. And we leave at 8 a.m. If you eat breakfast. <coughs> breakfast at 7, we leave at 8. And uh, then uh, tomorrow there is an altar building. And uh, he's taking us to uh, halfway up or, or at least partially up one of the mountains you saw along the route so on the way here and right now behind us i think uh you see those mountains there'll be a snow on top there all right so uh it's one of those mountains uh, but we won't go all the way up because uh i don't think we could uh manage the whole day if we went up the whole, so they go partially up the mountain and then we will uh, be an altar there and then continue to Laodicea uh, which is Laodicea and uh, just to pray at the, uh, that site and then we are done for the day and the rest is a journey on the bus It's a five hour journey It is a five hour journey because Laodicea is the furthest uh, point if you remember the map uh, is like an arrowhead and you got Ephesus, Myrna and Pergamos as an arrowhead and then Pergamos going uh, backwards into Thyatira, Sardis, and then Laodicea. So Laodicea is the furthest point out. Uh, uh, pardon? Oh yeah, yeah, Philadelphia. Yes, Philadelphia, Philadelphia and Sardis are nearby each other. Like, like so there's Sardis, Philadelphia, and then, uh, but Philadelphia is slightly off, but uh, in terms of road, but in terms of straight line, you could drive all the way to Laodicea because of the mountains so Philadelphia is where we are going tomorrow tomorrow first thing is Philadelphia and uh, followed by uh, Laodicea the Philadelphia town that is now uh, is another um, uh, remember that if you went on a normal tour of seven churches they bring you to all the wrong places uh, like officially today that church is built on the fourth century so I had to emphasize, that's not the Sardishas. The Sardishas had disappeared. If they had a building, they were actually meeting in uh, house to house. That's why in the end, uh, when we were there praying in Sardis today, uh, see, you always must be sensitive 24 hours to the angels all the time. So when we were praying, you were sent a certain atmosphere. Uh, it was there, the Lord was pleased, it was good. But then the Sadi's angel just, the angel or Sadi just didn't want to come down. So he just stood up there, still blessing us. It was like, like showers of, of energy came from him to us. And then towards the end, I said, okay, I think we need a bit more. And then he says, come up to him. So when we went up there, it was a different atmosphere. And when we went up there today, 
uh, at a certain point, because you all were facing towards me praying, behind you was a cloud formation. And one of the cloud formation was a right hand. You could see the shape of a thumb, and you see four lanes of cloud line up like a finger uh, behind me. So when I was praying, if you notice, I keep looking up in the sky at that point, because say, okay, cloud formation. And you know, I'm someone who don't, sh don't try to magnify things unless it's really necessary. I mean, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry can look at a cloud and imagine anything you want. So, and, uh, so until, it, until, it is, until it's like very pixelated, high definition, what really got high, then I would say, okay, that's very special. Uh, but it was in the shape of uh, uh, four fingers and, uh, and a thumb, uh, like a right hand. And uh, I just didn't tell anything. We just continue to pray. And then it slowly, throughout the prayer, disappeared towards the end. And at the end, you go, you got almost four lines of cloud merged together. And it's only after the meeting that Mui Ling told me, I saw a hand, then my ears perk up. Okay, how did she see that when she's facing this way? But then what you saw was behind me, uh, that direction. And you saw a hand, like a right hand, a palm appear. Yeah, correct, like a palm. She saw a palm. So I said, that's interesting. I never said that to anyone. Then only I described the actual clouds that was there. And so when I ask a lot uh, between just now and now, the Lord says every day He has been giving us signs. First day was a sign of you stopping the rain. Second day was a sign of the rainbow after what you did. Today is a sign of the hand. Because this is not the terminator story. I speak to the hand kind of thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, some of you never watch a movie, don't know what it's about, of course. So, but uh, uh, today was a sign on the hand. I didn't know it was a sign kind of thing, but so I said, okay. It's unusual. I've never seen clouds like that. But I didn't want to interrupt your all praying. And so when, Mo, when, when Mui Leng says, he saw the hand, I said, okay, I need to let you all know uh, uh, about what, what was happening behind you. You were looking for the Z, uh, Zoro. Uh. Oh, live Z O E. Okay, I said God don't 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 use Greek in heaven. Mm. You remember on our trip we saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was one trip in the seven churches. We saw the 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 form of the Z. Okay, Zoe, the life of God. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what God choose, and uh, so He sometimes tell, He sometimes don't tell, and uh, so when He doesn't tell, there's nothing to tell, and uh, we don't try to make up something, and so. But tomorrow, uh, seeing how God has been operating throughout this trip, I would think that God is building us to something, something very special, and that we individually can receive from the Lord, and uh, also. Uh, where is our young Joel? Let me have some testimonies. Joel! Yeah, come on over here. Yeah. And Joel, when we were praying in the church of... Uh, um, today was Thyatira. And Sadis, yes, he saw something and he was very obedient to God. And so you just speak, my mic is closed here. Anyway, I will, I will repeat for you if you all cannot hear. Right, so we let Joel share something. Well, I was standing there and I sensed a powerful presence. And then I looked all around the directions and found out the spot where I, from where I sensed the power. It was behind me. It was so powerful that I can't describe. And when I went there, I was told to remove my shoes and kneel down and pray, which I did. Then a, then a voice told me, Joel, my son, I love you. And I saw a vision, Jesus on a throne, so powerful, creatures blue, white, different colors, all worshiping. I praised God and thanked Him. Amen. So, okay, I, I read. Can I read for you? I'll again, thank you. Okay, we'll see here. Yeah. So, uh, Joel says, I was standing there 
and I in Thyatira in the old church there where we were praying. So I was standing there and I sensed a powerful presence. And I looked at all directions and found out the spot from where I sensed the power. And that's towards the left side, right? Uh, with the curved building part. Yes. And um, so powerful that I can't describe. When I went to that spot, so he actually walked to, you actually walked to that spot while we were praying. You walked to the spot. So I went there and I was told to remove my shoes, to kneel down and pray, which I did. After he told me that, the first thing I say, did you do it? And he did. And you know how cold it is? Yeah. <laughs> And so, and by the way, the presence that he sensed was an angel standing there. And so sometimes you got to go to the angel, not the angel come to you. See, many of us, you know, you sit on your sofa or you lie on your bed, get out in the morning or in the evening, and you expect all the angels like your servant, uh, come whisper to you here, you know. You might as well ask the angel to give you a back rub at the same time. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, your, your angel really minister to you. But sometimes we have to go to the angel. Go to where they are. Remember Moses went to the burning bush. You know, already the bush was burning and didn't burn out. And he was curious scientifically. How can the bush burn and didn't burn out? And then he actually went not knowing as an angel. He went to discover why the bush burned and never burned out. And uh, he had to go to the angel. He had to go to the phenomena. He had to go and inquire why it's that way. And the phenomena doesn't come to you. Already, I, you know how frightened Moses is, right? When, uh, when, 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 uh, when the snake, when the stick turned into a snake. Do you know that Moses ran? Ran away from the snake? So that brave warrior, 40 years, prince of Egypt, and brave, killed many people in war. The snake turned, uh, the, the snake came from, the stick turned into a snake, he ran away. So, uh, imagine if the angel had to come to Moses and the bush had to hop, ping, 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 I would say, Moses might run. <laughs> so sometimes we got to go to the angel and not to come. So that's good. You went. And then you have, it says here, uh, I was told to remove my shoes and kneel down and pray, which I did. Then a voice spoke to me. A voice told me, can I like make bass voice now? Okay, like God speaking. Okay, so the voice said, uh, uh, the voice said, Joel, my son, I love you. <laughs> All right, so anyway, and he says that I saw a vision, Jesus on a throne so powerful, creatures blue, white, different colors, all worshiping. I praise God and thank Him. So, that's good. Yeah. You got anything else to share? Tonight, anything? Well, I got one in Sardis. Okay, tell me, tell me. I, uh, can you start? Whisper to me that I whisper to them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this one. Okay. Oh, you already recorded it down. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Uh, this is the other one in Sardis. While we were praying at Sardis, the angel of Sardis told me, to move through these thorns to a clearing and to pray there for a little while. So when we were gathered there, everybody standing still, the angel said, move to the thorns. Well, not bad, eh? <laughs> I don't know whether they, uh, any of you heard the voice that tell you, go to the thorns. <laughs> anyway, uh, so God said, go to the thorns. Um, uh, I was afraid of the thorns, but I knew nothing stood between me and God. So I went through the thorns. Did anything happen? Nothing? Okay. I felt that the angel of Sardis gave me something, maybe an impartation. I believe you receive it. Amen. Thank you. Angel Al. Yes. I actually saw him ah. walk towards the corner. 
That means on your right corner. Part okay. Part. Yeah. I saw him. I said, why did he walk through that that corner? I know. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, he was standing uh, at nearby uh, for a while. Yeah. Because I was saying it is a bit uh, unusual. Unusual one, two is a bit dangerous for him at his yeah. age. Yeah, I was observing him uh, when he was walking over there. Because I'm, I'm probably nearest to him. Ah, yeah. so you must be wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah. Ah, tonight you found out. No, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> because an angel was there. Okay, or a presence. And uh, he has been seeing a few visions, but even now that you can see vision, sometimes the angels hide for him, and all he felt is a presence. The same way some of you might see visions or dream dream, the angels choose how they deal with us and train us to test our obedience. He is actually being trained. When the angels hide themselves, and you don't see anything but you hear, it's because they are tuning your hearing. It's just like, like if, if we are having a music class right now, and perhaps in some teachers might do it, you might have to blindfold yourself in order to test your hearing with concentration. So sometimes the angels don't actually show themselves to you, so they can test and tune your hearing. And at other times you might see something but hear nothing. So maybe he's tuning your seeing until you walk in an open vision. Uh, praise God. Anyone has some, anything else to share tonight? And oh yes, Christian, you had something about... Ah um, uh, uh, yes. Um, okay, uh, last night, while we, um, after, after the Q&A session that we had, we uh, were praying and uh, what I saw was uh, the Angel of Thyatira. Uh, we, I, I knew uh, today that we were going to pray, we were going to receive uh, different things. But what I saw, I saw uh, some of us uh, being knighted. You know, they are king, the knight, uh, knight. So, so uh, they came there, they knelt down and before that we were given swords. Everyone had like swords to wield. Uh, swords of power to wield around. Then uh, the knighted ones uh, were told to kneel down. Then like they were knighted, you know, with the sword like this. Then they were given horses. Then they were riding their horses all over the world. All the four corners of the world and beyond. And that's what they saw. Yeah. Amen. So he was sharing with me his vision that he saw uh, last night in a bus yeah. and uh, then when I heard it I say okay because at that time I didn't share my vision of Thyatira uh, Angel of Thyatira and I said that in the morning about four something he came during my prayer and then he talked about how the uh, anointing to perform signs and wonders the power will come on some people because of their predestination but he also says that some are not predestined to work in mighty power but they work in other areas they will still receive some measure and so you also saw not, not everyone was yes. knighted or received that and because everyone's calling was different and so that was among the things I shared with him that I saw that it was not equally distributed it was according to the measure each one need but at the same time I saw the other part about New Jerusalem which is unrelated to your position on earth, is based on your transformation of character, which, which is the message he's trying to give. And also, I saw a whole, the whole room was filled with creatures from different, different parts of the universe, and uh, that some of us will be ministering and teaching them. So imagine some of you might be sent to a world where, where creatures have no such thing as eyes. So, perhaps that's why you were trained in other areas and in order to minister to them. Praise God. Anybody else had some uh, downloads or dreams you'd like to share? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. Because my whole body started aching in the moment as well, finding the whole rig stopped. 
So when someone gave me a stone to go put on the altar, the moment I put the stone on the altar, I, my tongues changed from the usual tongues, and I was saying things like a Muslim. And the utterance was more like Islamish kind of thing. And then I saw what was like a tornado, like the, how the tornado forms right in the center of the altar. It moved up as it spread up, it became huge, and it surrounded the, made a big round, uh, like circle-ish. And then as I looked more, it became like, it became like tongues. It's like tongues were coming out of it coming down to where we were. So it was like tongues were flowing down, down, down where we were. So after that one, when we went to the last place where we prayed, when the pastor said that we go up, 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 when I reached there, as we were praying, it was something so supernatural. Because every time I've been saying it, I was crying because I didn't know how to explain it. I was telling my husband, what can really bring out what I saw really, but what it was, it was like a big ring, like gold yellow ring that was a very huge circle that engulfed all of us and then it brought out something like a, sh a shield, like a cloth, like a shield that went round, we were all in that, in that um, kind of shield and inside it was more like gold. And in that moment, my knees gave way. I had to kneel down right there. So, and then a voice was telling, was saying that, absorb, absorb as much as you can. As in, get in, get deeper into what you receive. Because it felt like there was such a glory in that place. I could not stand anymore. And I, it was cold, but I couldn't feel down was cold. It felt so comfortable, so normal, like I didn't want to get up. So that's what I was mm. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, when we were building the altar, uh, we were praying. I started, when I was looking, I see lights. Lights, small lights, small lights. I'm like, <laughs> I tell to myself, I don't see vision normally. But uh, I start to look and I could see light. And then it forms, make forms. Like, uh, and I, I just, put my hands like this, and uh, it, it will come and fall in my hand. And uh, it, it was so, and when I was looking, I'm like, I, I, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it continue, continue, continue. And uh, when we go to the, the other side, um, we went up for it again. Uh, and I, I, I said to say, was it my, my imagination or something? And I said, but I will concentrate and just continue to pray. And suddenly, I, I, I heard her, uh, she was, uh, Doris was beside me. She was telling me, in French, she was talking in French, le soir, le soir, le soir. It means receive, receive, receive. And I'm like, thank you, God, thank you. Well, that's amazing. And in my heart, I, was, I, I felt so happy. And, uh, when we came down, we were singing. And, uh, I felt so happy. And uh, I, I was like, God, we were farm. And we were telling me, especially in, in the language I hear. And it, it's funny, she was talking in French. I'm like, this what? This what? Which she doesn't speak French, right? She's speaking in tongues. And uh, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. You really receive impartation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, Pastor. Yes. Uh, for the Hatira, the uh, altar building site, uh, it was quite special for uh, looking out for the site. Uh, in yes. The sense that, um, uh, it was only decided today 
and yes. uh, we pray, uh, it was decided by the tour guide. Yes. Uh, we pray for the angels to guide them. Correct, correct. Because uh, uh, we actually saw the map uh, previously and we wanted to go to the, uh, around there, but uh, we were not sure. And uh, it took us some convincing talking to the tour guide as well, but in the end, uh, we went to the right place. So during the altar building that time, uh, while praying, uh, what I felt was that uh, there was a verse given to me uh, uh, that uh, uh, his angels are like a flame of fire. And then after that, I kind of like see you know fire coming from the top, uh, a column, you know, onto the altar uh, area. And I guess it touched the, the, the people. Uh, so I, th I think, okay, interesting. Then um, as we go about uh, the rest of the journey, uh, I seek for understanding. And then during the studies uh, site, uh, the time then I felt there was an understanding that um, we know that angels are like a flame of fire. And, and they minister uh, for the Lord, does His, his work, uh, especially those that uh, is of power. Uh, but humans have never stepped up to that level. But it is coming a time where, as humans, we are also going to be elevated closer to like the angels, like a flame of fire. And to do the works of the Lord, that also involves power together with that. Amen. Yes, I said you heard that. Yes, I just want to share because uh, I felt that this trip, uh, in terms of uh, <coughs> we as uh, the Glorious Church and what God's doing, and that this trip we're already seeing um, the effectiveness of our prayers in breaking through into the, this world, in the physical, material world. Uh, because we've already seen some signs already. Uh, when we were at Pagamos uh, praying at the Red Church, uh, I saw the, the angel of Pagamos and he had a huge sword in his hand. And um, I, was, I was just uh, curious to look at the sword, and in the sword I saw the reflection of all the people in the Glorious Church. And uh, that's who we are. I mean, the Glorious Church is one that rises up in worship, uh, and that glory of God will has come down, it's growing more and more. And then for some reason, during the prayer, uh, and then I was meditating on that, he actually inserted the sword into the ground in the earth. And that was striking because it's telling us, telling us that the spiritual is gonna, con it's already started to contact the physical world. Because the, as we pray, uh, our prayers and our work uh, in the Lord, is becoming more into uh, affecting the natural world now because it has to and that's the voice church growing and helping the earth uh, even today when we were praying at Taitira uh, the church uh, I, uh, I sensed a very strong world wind <coughs> circling around us I, maybe I think I heard someone say about world wind and I just I knew that and, that it's, it's, it's getting more and more impacting this natural world that what, what we're doing and then later on when we came up on the mountain started praying I'm not sure if you noticed but there was a very strong wind that came during the prayer on the altar so I believe that's just showing us that when God's showing us things in the spiritual realm that it's going to manifest and uh, this is a manifestation of the sons of God coming out. That it's no longer just uh, there that we see in the spiritual world, or what God shows us in dreams and visions. But it's now it's actually coming out, revealing itself yeah, in our natural world. And it has to come. And I felt that the, the prayer criteria that we had was the probably most significant one. Uh, because that's what the church needs to reveal the Lord, the demonstration of His power. After we, you know, we ministered the word of God. So I believe that 
we have, have, have received something very powerful, and that's the Lord has given us through this trip something that when we take away, that we can actually impact the circle around us more effectively. And that's what the Lord is waiting for to see the truth revealed to people so that there is the reality of God in people's lives. So that's just some of the things that the Lord has been revealing. Just Amen. Yes, Jimmy. Hey. Okay. Oh, you saw someone dressed in white. Oh, I really want us dressed in white. Everyone dressed in white. I can't remember if it was everyone, but I saw some people. It yes. Was a big, uh, thing. Okay. So just shared that uh, when Jimmy just shared that when we were praying at the altar, yeah. she saw uh, some of our clothing change to white. Okay. Yes. Tayatira. Uh, altar at Tayatira. Yes. Which is nearby here, it's along the road. Yeah. Charity. Um, right before Pastor called the young lady to pray for her, I saw balls of fire just entering into everybody. And it was just coming very quickly, just entering into everyone. And so even as Pastor said that we should agree with him that to release power and that God's power should come forth, it's the, the power was already released and given to us. And so we just needed to have faith and just you know, stand with pastor and pray and know that God has already released that power. Um, and then when we went to Tayatira, where we climbed the mountain and we, we were building the altar, I saw, I saw as the altar was built, I saw like the rocks energizing. And then as the rocks were energizing, they turned into fire. And so the fire came all around the altar. And then I saw the angel of Tyatira standing there. And his, his legs were like strong pillars. And it looked as though that they had come out of the furnace. And it was like refined. And he was standing very tall, like sharp, like pillars. And he, he, was, he looked very powerful and fierce to look upon. And then when I looked up, I saw many chariots in the sky just descending from heaven and there were warriors all over the chariots and so I realized that the Lord has released divine power into us and has given us um, the ability to stand and um, uh, speak against uh, authorities and powers in this nation and to be able to stand firm in the, in the name of the Lord. And, uh, and so when we also went to uh, the church in Sardis, as we were praying, I saw like um, the earth um, just becoming fertile and things were growing out of the earth. And then when Pastor told us to go up higher, when we went up, I looked behind Pastor as we were praying and I saw seven huge angels standing behind him and they were all blowing the shofar. Yeah, so that's what I saw. Amen. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, they can't hear, so a bit louder. Yeah. You can stand up and share, so they can hear. Uh, we we just go up to the hill and halfway, and my heart feels so pain, but I don't understand why it's that pain. So I just give thanks to the Lord. Continue to walk up after building, after building finish. I saw a ton a light like lighting twice and after the, the uh, after we go to the other one so as I say go up higher the angel is upstairs so I just try to go up halfway and my heart is so pain again and I just give thanks to the Lord. So I asked Pastor what's that mean? As I say is there someone someone is receiving healing. Oh, okay. Um, when she, when when uh, Louis went to the 
uh, the place where we pray in uh, Sadis. Uh, that's where you find uh, uh, altar building. Oh, first was altar building, which is Tayatira altar building. Uh, on the way up the mountain, on uh, the little hill, uh, she felt her heart pain. Very, very painful. Then she, she went up all the way, uh, and then she continued to pray. And <clears throat> oh, then at the altar pray, praying, she saw two lightnings came down. Then her second experience she was sharing was uh, in Sadis. When we prayed the first time in the lower ground, behind the uh, archaeological site, was there anything? No pain? Only when you go up. Then, uh, then when I told everyone that I, uh, the angel asked us to go up higher to where the angel was standing to pray, then when she's climbing up that section, she felt her heart also painful. And then she asked me what it meant. I don't know, when you pray after that, what happened? Or you just feel thankful to the Lord and give thanks to the Lord. Then after that, you disappear. Okay. So I told her that God is healing a person. Uh, of, of, it could be an actual physical heart problem. Or it could be uh, uh, a soul problem. But some sort of healing had taken place. Yes. Uh, yes, it's a word of knowledge transmitted through feelings. Um, when we were praying at uh, Sadis, when we went up higher, when we went to the higher levels, uh, I saw 12 pillars. I, I just went from the middle of it, and they were, it was really graceful, like she found material, but I knew it's not material, that's the closest I can describe it. And they were lined up and it was like a walkway, a long walkway, and it, it was golden color and clear, like it's see through, but it's golden color, clear. And um, yeah, I think that that's, that's all, that's all I saw. Just a token. And then the scripture in Revelation 22 was just came into mind. Oh, and you have a new, oh. Uh New Jerusalem. Revelation 22. Yeah. <coughs> Anna, yeah, yeah. Revelation 22, 1. Yeah. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its tree. And on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The gifts of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And that's what it's for. So when we were praying up there, in the higher ground in Sadis, they were like healing flowing through the nations. Like the leaves on the tree of life. So the chiffon kind of... Because it was really graceful and just... Yes. It was flowing through the nation. And I knew when we were praying at the lower ground that it was a different atmosphere. See, every time you pray, you must be aware of what is happening in the Spirit, even though you're concentrating on God. So when we were praying, uh, I knew the uh, angel of Sadis joined us, but he joined us from on top, which is sometimes why the angels like to stand. And with him was a whole group of other angels. And uh, <clears throat> then I knew we still had to finish a formation prayer. So once we finish a formation prayer, then uh, uh, the instruction from the angel was to go up to where he is. So it was a little climb, but when we went up to pray, it was a different atmosphere up there. It was something else. We have completed uh, five churches and it is releasing different parts of seven spirits. Tomorrow we, uh, we uh, finish Philadelphia and Laodicea, which complete all seven spirits. And it's important that at each place we are receiving something from the Lord and working with the seven spirits of God. As we work with spirits of God, uh, we learn to associate more and more with them. After we open for more questions, any other sharing before we share a bit? Yes, yes. Oh, there's one here, yes. Uh, let's Nelly share 
and then we'll let you share. Just now at Sadi's, facing the church there, before you said to go up, as I was praying, I just heard by myself, everything red. And then after that, the red turned to the whole of my front, here, all navy blue, and then purple. Then I thought, hey, can I imagine? So I opened my eyes and I think that I could buy again. I see all blue and purple, but I was wearing uh, orangey trousers. That cannot be all blue, but it's all blue and then purple. The big, big line, very beautiful. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were praying, I saw this. Uh, Nelly saw red, and then uh, although she is very, and then blue, and then afterward purple, uh, colors upon her, and uh, that's upon her, and there's a spirit being working in your life, and the colors that were there, on. Uh, those colors are, uh, and at that time, in the natural, you were wearing orangey. Yeah. So it's nothing to do with the natural color. And it was something else. Praise the Lord. Jewel. In verse 2, we were having some worship. When we arrived at the shopping center, even though we had parked, we continued to worship. And while we were worshiping, I felt a strong sense of merging. At the big supermarket yeah. there. Yes. Very good. So the law continued to work even all through. Amen. Pastor, I'd like to share. Yes, sure, uh, Tony. On the first day at Ephesus. Yes. Uh, I can't remember which site, but one of the sites when I was praising the Lord, when I closed my eye, I could just see like sunset red orangey red like that and then uh, it's just like a ray coming down in the midst of the red scenario okay. so that was on uh, Ephesus okay. then uh, the next day uh, at um, uh, Smyrna um, again I prayed and then red again okay. and this time I could send something like waterfall. Okay. Okay. Uh, the earlier one was the sun ray. Okay. Then um, just now at Sardis, I'll, again I saw red. Red, yes. And then this time it's like the spotlight, a sun shining. On you. Towards me. Towards you, okay. And, and that's, that's it. Too. Okay. And then tomorrow, <laughs> we'll be seeing red. And <laughs> all right, so and uh, that's good, uh, and 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 that one helped me to move into what I'm something going to talk about. The ray that he saw was an energizing from a spirit being, and the colors mean different thing. But what the spirit being was doing was helping you to see visions. So when he energized enough, then you begin to see um, rays. Then the second time he energizes you enough, then you begin to see a river. And third time he energizes you enough, and you could see the spotlight on you. So that was uh, uh, energizing from the spirit. You notice that we're speaking about colors and all that. Uh, can you pass me that uh, code? My code. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you have internet, uh, because we don't have a screen behind me, and since you got a hotel internet, I assume, or whatever internet you have, if you could go to Google, so that you can have the same uh, image that I'm going to ask you to look at. And uh, I assume your search engine should be the same if you use Google. And you Google uh, primary colors. I need you to look at the chart. Primary colors. And then put there, addictive or subtractive. That means when the colors are added together or when the colors are subtracted. So look at additive, addictive. Additive is A-D-D-I-T-I-V-E. Additive, not addictive, eh? without the C, additive. That means adding, additive. A-D-D-I-T-I-V-E 
and then next to it put subtractive. You might, you might, you might, the search engine might find it for you. Then you will see a color scheme like that. Can you see that? You can see two color schemes. And uh, now, look at the color scheme that you have for those online. And this is what you see. And uh, the additive is the true color. The additive is the true color. And the additive is what uh, they use to make TV and all those. And you only need, I repeat, you only need three colors to create every color. So behind all the LED, OLED, or, or a new type of TVs, there are little three primary colors. With the three primary colors, how they merge, how they turn on, they can create all colors. And when you can see the three primary colors, when they put together, they create white. Because originally they are from white. Now these are natural phenomena that has a spiritual uh, purpose. Man is the only creature who can see seven colors besides a few other mammals and animals. Some insects can only see certain colors. Do you know a dog cannot see all colors? So when a dog looks at the world, it's not as colorful as you and I see it. And because man was made in God's image, we have inside our eyes uh, those uh, uh, things that God created for us to see the colors in the way God wants us to see. Of course, we are in a fallen state, still being renewed, not resurrected fully yet in our body, but on the way and in the process. When we are fully uh, energized in the resurrection body, you will see all the same colors in even greater detail. In even greater detail. So the primary colors are the real true colors. But if you go to school and you learn painting, uh, when they mix certain color, we know from school days, when you mix red and blue, it will come up purple. But when it came up purple, it's not because you create the color. It's because uh, the way the colors are made in the pastel is that they block out the colors. Things cancel each other out until only purple is reflected. So purple is not created, it was like subtract. Uh, and so they, they cannot reflect that light. And so there is a called the subtractive color scheme. The subtractive is more like what painters use and artists use because of our own pastel or, or substance that we use for coloring things. And uh, it is it's subtractive, you can read more about what it means. When you look at, and when you buy a printing machine, printing machine is made up of um, color substances, but they only, when you buy ink, they only have three colors plus black that you need to buy. And the colors that you buy are these colors. They are cyan, magenta, and yellow. With those three colors, they can create every other color. So your printing machine, which can print, if it's a very good printing machine, it can print photographic colors on paper, but it only uses three primary colors. And it uses the technology of subtractive coloring. So subtractive is a mix together, and it cancel, 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 until only one color come out. The real one is the additive. And that is from, uh, from the rainbow and from actual pure light when you shine it together you will never realize that red and green produce yellow you can see from the chart red and green produce yellow and uh, then of course a uh, red and uh, uh, and you notice that the colors that they produce are the actual uh, colors of the printer the, the magenta and a scion and uh, also yellow. It's inside the little circle where they mix together, where two colors are mixing. 
with white in between. Okay, so these are basic and they can produce many more colors, tuning whether light or dark. And uh, when you look under images, from all you click under images, uh, I think the download is coming up slowly. You will find that besides this, they can have it darker or lighter, which is where you get the black come. Okay, internet is slow. Uh, we have one where there's a lighter and darker, uh, different colors. And anyway, it got a lot of description where it talks about uh, various levels of colors that are there and uh, different charts that you can do. Now, the, 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 the primary colors are what is coming forth to produce every other color, which is slightly different from a rainbow. The rainbow lights are arranged according to frequency. So when you look at a rainbow, uh, it is a frequency light uh, which, which is arranged according to about 400 nanometers to about 800 nanometers, the wavelength of the light and uh, how it hits our eye and that's the colors you see in a rainbow. Each of the colors, interestingly, has an effect on the body. They found, they accidentally found, remember a thing about probably around 2000 and 2006, I think, 2006, after I had the experience of the spiritual world, um, I mentioned that I saw hospitals and in the hospitals they are using non-evasive surgery and in the, in the hospital of the future they were using lights to cure people they must have found a way to make it very intense and then later I researched into that I found that when the astronauts went to outer space, they found that certain wavelength of a red light helps a wound to heal faster. So with the, under the red light, the, the cells were multiplying and healing faster than under any light. So our body responds very differently to different light. And uh, now it has come into the beauty treatment world where they use different lights like uh, blue and red and green or orange and all that. So the, it's slowly coming in. Except that most of the time you don't feel it as much because they haven't learned to increase the intensity. But the day is coming when light treatment will be used. And uh, Deborah was sitting next to me in the bus and she was talking about how uh, recently uh, our brother Pig Leong was going to some frequency treatment. I said, okay, that's new, I haven't heard about it. And they use different frequencies to treat different parts of your body. And it seems to be able to energize the person and all those areas. And uh, then while fellowshipping with the South African group, uh, one of them, uh, Kerban, which many of you know from our last trip, he is uh, undergoing some training in using some sort of quantum light treatment and frequency. Now from the spiritual world, after I went to the spiritual world in 2006 and God took me to heaven for about six weeks, I saw a lot of things. And then when I came back, there was a side effect. The side effect is I can see different frequencies separately. And uh, I could see like your heart, your liver, your organ and different tissues are vibrating at different frequencies. And then all those different frequencies, when they mix together in your body like a symphony, uh, a, a orchestra, 
they produce one main sound, which is your localized, individual, unique uh, frequency. And so frequencies and vibrations are part of what is behind all reality. An atom and molecule is actually a lot of empty space, but a lot of energy floating about. Uh, the nucleus of an atom is so tiny, uh, and it contains a neutron and a proton, but the electron circulating it is also tiny, and it's just a lot of space. But because of all those uh, atomic particles circulating, formed together, you touch any material, is very solid. So behind all our solidness is actually frequency and vibration. Even atoms go through frequency changes. When you expose an atom to ultraviolet light, which is towards the blue and, and purple frequency, the atoms begin, the atom expands. And uh, the electron go into what I call higher orbit because it absorbs all the energy. It absorbs all the frequency energy. So each of the atoms became bigger in a physical sense. And uh, then when, uh, when the blue light is no more shining on it, the atom, of course, each atom and uniqueness react to different light. I'll talk about that afterwards. Then when the atom uh, is no more exposed to that high frequency light and it goes back to its, what I call its normal state, as it goes back to normal state, the electron becomes lower orbit. The initial atom actually shrink. When it shrinks, all the energy it absorbs has to go somewhere. It is released in a photon. That means light is emitted. That is why sometimes you know ultraviolet light can shine on some, some objects and you can see the light reflected out. Because the objects are, are being agitated, the electrons are being agitated and produce light. And UV light can do that. And of course, each of the combination of, of molecules are more sensitive to different frequency. Hydrogen got its frequency. It is called spectrography. And uh, when you photograph uh, the light emitted from an electron and you agitate it, it emits. Its light is specific to a frequency. Spectrography. And then if it's the, you add another atom and another neutron, it becomes helium. Helium has its own frequency and spectrography. And that is how when you can capture a light, you could see what is the substance causing the light. Because all photons are emitted from molecules. So they can capture a starlight and see whether in a starlight there's sodium, there's helium, there's hydrogen. Because each one has a, uh, what I call a black spot that moves in a spectrography. It is that area where the movement of the electron is not is not a touching the area of frequency. Uh, it's a black, what I call a black rings. So, what I'm saying in summary is all reality is a vibration and frequency. Everything around you. And it's only our understanding of it and our ability to, ability to manipulate it that is limited. But one of the things that actually happen, if you pray in tongues one hour, it actually affects your frequency. And your hands, which happen to be created by God as channels, whatever your hand touches, alters the frequency from the spiritual realm. And so sometimes when you're praying, uh, over a, a person or over a painful part of your body, if you will put your hand there and pray in tongues, some changes in the frequency might bring healing to that part of your body. We can manipulate the frequency through prayer, through thought energy, through our faith, 
And these are our spiritual instruments. The world has discovered how to manipulate it by creating the emission of different lights using different chemicals. So when they pass electricity to a certain chemical, it might produce green light. Produce another compound, it might produce red light. That's how they make LED lights today. And uh, what you see here is the original. The primary colors, you will see uh, the original uh, uh, primary colors. That uh, These are the primary colors, the additive part. And you will notice that some of you have visions and different parts and I was asking God on the color scheme that is there. I know about color schemes because uh, we have visions where you saw the 24 elders and the 24 elders work with 24 spirit beings. There are, there are 24 types of spirit beings and they flow from the 24 elders. And uh, spirit beings are divided into four different groupings. And uh, what you have is uh, the 24 elders. And that is one of the things the Lord revealed, not this morning, but the morning before. When the angel of Smyrna was talking to me, after the angel of Smyrna finished talking, uh, I was brought into a place where I was shown about mystery of lights and the emission of it. And although you can see the 24 elders as 24 elders, they are divided into three, uh, four groupings. And uh, uh, let's not, not, not talk about elders because they are way much in a higher level, but talk about the spirit beings, 24 spirit beings that that is behind all reality and uh, when the 24 spirit beings manifest and all of them show up they cannot go too near each other because of energy explosive energy so we have seen 24 spirit beings and they, they form a circle the circle that they stand is in an exact equal distance that even you use the best measurement it will be point hundreds of zeros to the exact distance never too near, never too far and they are divided into four different groupings and they are based on the primary colors so there is one group that is the primary color what are the primary colors in the additive area? they would be red, green and blue are you, no Primary. See, you all keep getting confused between additive and subtractive. You are being influenced by subtractive. Additive. Remember that subtractive is a deception. Subtractive is because the substance that you have, like for example, yellow, uh, yellow mixed with uh, uh, magenta produce red in a sense do you see the color schemes I know there these are the additive this is the chart so the the primary colors these are the chart there is another chart for painters and it is a derivation of the subtractive further derivation you know that when you mix uh, uh, when you mix yellow and blue in paint, what color you get? Right? But here green is a primary color. So when you mix yellow with blue, it is not because it changes into blue. It's because the content of the blue color, the wavelength of the blue, and in the content of the yellow that you have come together and it cancel out all the colors blue stop being emitted blue uh, yellow stop being emitted and only green is emitted so they subtract and then left one emitting 
So the primary colors are actually red, blue, and green. And you can look at the cross-reference on the images. It's behind all the LEDs and everything. Yes. In relation to light. And how the frequencies mix. The mixing of frequencies is like the mixing of music. And it comes together. And so the primary colors come from uh, that. And in terms of, uh, the, there are three primary colors plus the area of black. And so when we saw the, when we saw the spirit beings that are there, and black is a manipulation of whether white is there or the absence of white or The absence of white makes black. The presence of white makes and, and a little, half the presence makes it grey. And so when we saw the spirit beings, we saw that uh, there were these primary colours and then because of the mixture of energy, they can produce different levels of uh, sub-frequencies that have the other colours. And uh, I was asking Lord, Lord, are they arranged in the sense of north, south, east, west, eagle, face of the man, and all those things? To some extent, you would have like uh, uh, the face of the lion, you got the reddish light. The face of the ox, a bit of the, uh, a bit of the uh, green light. Face of the man, blue. And in the face of the eagle, it could be either white or black. Now, I will include golden light under yellowish. Uh, in, in heaven, everything has a goldish flavor in all the light. And each one of us are being energized by different energies and different spirit beings. There are 24 of them. And some of them are like uh, you know, it's like the smooth color. Some are like matte color, but they are they are divided into four groups with four primaries, including black or white, in that sense. So when you have this uh, inside, and why do we need to understand these colors? Um, sometimes when you see. From your receiving point, you might be seeing the subtractive colouring. So when you're seeing the subtractive colouring, you will notice that inside the subtractive is the additive. Can you see the small little thing that look like a leaf shape? And the centre is black. Inside the additive is the subtractive. The one they use for printers, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So one is moving into the other. And uh, the way you see, sometimes it's subtractive, sometimes it's additive in the color region, which is why we cannot fully pin down that uh, the lion side is red or the ox side is. Uh, green because of that depends on whether you're on the inside looking out or the outside looking in in terms of the coloration so there are these primary colors which originally came from three and you know white light is made only from three colors white light is made out of three colors the essence of white light is what makes dark black color you only need three primaries because you only need the Trinity and you only need the three witnesses. And so in a sense, all the spirit beings can be arranged to be spirit beings that are witnessing to bear witness to spirit, spirit beings that bear witness to water, spirit beings that bear witness to blood. In 1 John chapter 5, it says, 
in heaven are the Trinity. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. On earth, there are three witnesses. The Spirit, the Blood, and the Water. So these are the three primaries. And they might appear in many colours because depending on the identity or subtractive that you experience. But they are the three primaries working, flowing from the Trinity. Now, the three primaries, when they all combine together and flow both inside and outside, you have the seven colours of the rainbow, which is the seven spirits. So the seven spirits of God themselves, from uh, peace, love, and joy, all the way up to power, life, wisdom, and mercy, are all primary colors. They go from one level to another. Have a look at the rainbow in your search engine now. And uh, you look at the rainbow in your surf search engine. And you see, and you can put rainbow frequency. And they can tell you that there are other vibrations beyond our ability to see the colors. So I would type that in Google, Rainbow Frequencies. Frequency. Rainbow Frequency. And then you either have this chart that tells you all the different colors, or you can have a more visual chart that shows uh, what frequency is in which light? Okay. There, you have this one. I used, I think I used this diagram before. This one. You click under images and you will have several. One of the first one is this little chart. That shows you the frequency uh, from the science point of view. And you can see how small we can see. Can you see how tiny? This is the whole radio wavelength to microwave. And there's a lot of colors we cannot see. The only color you see is this tiny little line. It is long chart. And on one end is gamma rays, x-rays, and uh, all the microwaves. Uh, and then slowly go to longer and longer wave, radio, TV waves. And you find microwave among the shorter and shorter wave. And there's infra and everything. All these have an impact on your body. They found that green light helps you to turn on and off your circadian rhythm. And then uh, blue light tends to shorten everything. And they found that when they expose uh, uh, most plants to red and red and blue light, that the plants can actually uh, produce more fruit. But then when they're exposed to green light, although plants are all green, it reduces. It's like uh, it, it, it stops too much of its growth. So whether that is addictive or sub subtractive in its effect, uh, only need further explanation. This is quite a new science that is still being explored in terms of frequency. We will understand it more uh, through the years. And uh, oops, I lost my light frequency thing. Ah, rainbow frequency. When you type rainbow frequency and you see, you see the chart, but then you type under images, then they give you at least a color chart that you can uh, flow with. And that is the color of the rainbow and you see these choices I just take the first one and um, take the first choice and you can see that actually green is in the middle green is in the middle and if you take all the seven colors of the rainbow and you put 
love towards the uh, beginning part and then you move towards the purplish and bluish side to uh, wisdom and uh, mercy side uh, that is one of the ways you chat there are several ways you can chat colors in the spirit one is through the chart of the seven spirits the other is to chart to north south east west on primary colors where lion is reddish and ox is greenish uh, face of the man is bluish or and then the eagle is whitish kind of thing uh, in the area uh, you could chart that way uh, depending on which angle you face one of the things we need to realize why must God create four living creatures in the first place? Every, every, every creation has its purpose. You know the answer why God created man. Because man is supposed to be in his perfect form, a perfect reflection of God. And so we teach God through who we are, through our form and shape, and also through our actual doctrine and teaching and understanding of God. And one day man will know as we are known. Uh, we will have the uh, anointing within, anointing upon and uh, we will have the word within and the word upon and we are perfect God-like images to the universe so there's a purpose of God creating man why did God create the four living creatures? because it takes four to express what God wants to express and the four are shaped in a form of animals because the animals symbolize the cycle you know not not charles darwin evolutionary chart but the four symbolize you could put all animals in the circle around the chart and somewhere is a giraffe somewhere in between all those things and it's it's a soul graph at the same time and so the healing of the soul, sometimes you will see different lights, different things. Like uh, where Alf uh, Alphonse, uh, when you saw the lights, what color were they? The, the little lights you saw in your hand. Stars? Like little stars, whitish color? Whitish color. And so uh, sometimes you can see whitish color. Tony saw uh, reddish color. I think uh, uh, Debra saw pink color in uh, Sadis, right? Uh, you saw reddish color somewhere else? Oh, you saw reddish color? In Ko oh, yes, the color in Korea. And uh, so. Uh, the colors that you saw at two different places are important. So you need to pray to God to why you're seeing the same color as you saw in Korea. Because the colors behind them have a frequency meaning and also have a healing meaning. And we are in the seven spirits which manifest in seven colors. Uh, as they minister into your life, we are going to the seven churches. We represent the seven uh, different attributes of God. They are being merged into us, and all of us might be insufficient in some, or need certain parts of us enhanced. Like for example, haven't you meet a person who is very wise but don't have enough love? Right, or you meet a loving person, but not very powerful person. You meet a powerful person, but not very peaceful person. So these are all attributes that we have. We have. We all must have the seven attributes equally. By default. By default. And what will happen if you have all the seven attributes equally? You will be exactly like Jesus. Powerful at times, gentle at times, loving at times, showing great love and compassion, 
and uh, then merciful at times. And so you could see different parts of Jesus manifest. Now, because we're all growing into Jesus, just like a plant needs sunlight, you know that every natural thing illustrates a spiritual principle. The tree needs sunlight. And you could expose the tree to different type of light or a lack of light and they will go into different things. In fact, they tested trees on different light and they found that only under certain light the tree grow better. Although the tree is green, you think shine green light on the tree, the tree likes it. No, it prefers red and blue. And today, I know because I actually bought those lights to experiment. And uh, I think they're somewhere in Sydney, pack, pack away. I bought LED lights, red and green. And you know where I bought them from? I bought them from people who grow plants indoors. Because I was interested to experiment to see how, what you feel when red light or blue light. So they got a mixture and all, you can, you can uh, adapt them to different mixture. And they use those to grow indoor plants super healthily. It's so good that today, the knowledge of plants is so good in horticu horticultural uh, area that they can grow a perfect plant indoors. They know how to tune the exact light. They don't need sunlight because they have analyzed sunlight and know which one the plant wants. Which one process, uh, help the plant to process different things. And grow a very healthy plant indoors. The technology is there. And uh, it illustrates we are like plants. The Bible considers us a branch of Jesus. The Bible considers the word planted into us as plants growing. The Bible calls us trees of righteousness. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 1, be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. How many times does the Bible consider us like plants? And like plants, sometimes we are weak in certain frequencies. So God will constantly shine the area or the Spirit keep working in the area in your life until you are better. Like for, for uh, Tony, I will advise, each time you pray, when you see red light, just enjoy it. Even if you don't see vision. And don't have the question, hey, why must red light like what about all the colors? But just enjoy the red light. And let it soak into you, soak into you, and through time, something is perfected in you. For Deborah, I would recommend that when she pray, try to recall the the was it the pinkish light that you saw in Korea and just now. And as you meditate on it, something is gonna come out of it as you hold on to the vision and let the vision continue to shine inside you. And some of you might see different types of lights and uh, as, you, as you pray, don't try to purposely create a light, of course, where your whole room is filled with <laughs> red light, it might not actually help. And uh, it is a spiritual wavelength. But be more sensitive to the colors you see to the uh, frequencies that are being tuned in you and they do not always remain the same. They change with different frequencies. Once you're familiar with frequency, there are many advantages. Advantages like uh, you don't actually have to go through the inter process of being conscious of the light. You could go to the tune into a consciousness level, you become a thought level, which you, you become conscious of. Like right now as I speak, uh, two things are happening. There is the uh, angel of uh, Philadelphia. Keep on wanting to talk. And I would think that he will show up tomorrow in my prayer like all the others. But tonight, he seems to be here present and uh, he's expecting uh, and preparing each one of our lives. 
giving knowledge and uh, he's standing in our midst roughly about uh, uh, around the pillar not this pillar the other second pillar and um, in the spirit that is because uh, in the spirit there are no pillars and uh, so uh, and he's like you know trying to quicken revelation and understanding in your life now, I can talk to you at the same time, talk to you, be the intermediary. I don't go through a process of light. But when you're exposed to all seven lights, you can tune to any frequency because each of the angels are their special frequency. And why he's here tonight, he's saying that it's because he's giving and imparting the necessary revelation that you need to have before you go and build an altar in Philadelphia so that you can have an impartation <coughs> he's also saying because some of you are blank ah, revelation that means uh, follow the Singapore Hongkian uh. Liao La Bo revelation tomorrow <laughs> so no need to go uh, finish and uh, uh, he's also saying because of our <laughs> I, he's not speaking English he's speaking in tongues and I'm translating it so one of the translations sound funny to me because there are no translation but the closest English word is because of your infirmities infirmities which in our language means sickness so to him you're all sick <laughs> No. So, so, uh, yes, but, but the stronger word that was used, that was interpreted, because the interpretation of tongues is also happening at the same time. So, the closest matching of the word completely up is infirmities. So, he's speaking in tongues, got to interpret. So, uh, shortcomings fall short of the interpretation. So, to him, and it can be that way, what? Because any lack is like sickness to them. So, uh, he is quickening because of our frequent infirmity. He is quickening Bible verses. So, you are being, being given Bible verses. They are flowing through you as I speak. Some of you are feeling Bible verses coming to you. Anybody on this side? Uh, Bible verses. You are having Romans 8 coming to you. Okay. Because that is a scripture you must meditate on tonight. Otherwise, you are not ready for tomorrow. So, we know what Romans 8 is about. There is about all things working together for good. But, uh, so, you must meditate until it is a part of you. Also, Holy Spirit helping pray in the Spirit. Okay. So you have to read the chapter and meditate on that. Somewhere else because the light choke should have decided any uh, maybe you miss it or somebody you didn't get the scripture. Different what? Huh? Portals. 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 Okay. 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 Oh, you got Roman say also. Yeah. So they got Roman A, you got Roman say also. Oh, powerful. Eh? And by the way, as you speak, he has changed his position because 
he know everyone looking at his position there. So where is where is his position now? Huh? That means he was there, but he's no more there. Yes, yes, correct. He moved. Yeah. Anybody sense it when she was talking? He moved. Where did he move to? <laughs> Maybe? Maybe I'm not. Oh, okay. Okay. Above. Uh, this, this one doesn't exist. Uh. And uh, so, still to laugh now, kind of thing. So, you can be sensitive to the thing of spirit. Sometimes, some of you see it as light. A light movement. Now, the light that you saw. The red, the blue, the purple are uh, uh, three different lights that's energizing. And you remember I said that in this tree, on February the 9th, all of you receive your miracle of healing. Miracle of healing. As you absorb it properly. So there is frequencies being imparted and certain things being imparted. And sometimes you see as a movement of light. Sometimes you see as an overall colors. And sometimes angels, not just spirit beings, appear as lights. And how do I state this? In the spirit, you will know instantly. Maybe not quite so instant for some. Maybe after some time, you know it. There's a knowing the spirit. Like when... Um, Jesus was being transfigured even though they have a short they actually have a short time to glimpse during the whole transfiguration process the three disciples were sleeping so they only woke up towards the end after Jesus had a long conversation with uh, uh, with Moses and with Elijah and they were talking about him going to the cross a very long conversation so by the time they woke up, the conversation was over. And immediately what the Peter says, let us build a tabernacle for you, for Moses, for Elijah. How did he know? It's just instant. So sometimes when you look at the light, there is an instant knowing. How do you train this instant knowing? No shortcut, meditation on the word. The more you meditate on the word, uh, you know why the word sharper than a two-edged sword pierce dividing soul and spirit? So that you know straight away what your spirit is saying and what your soul is saying. I know when my soul is talking. I know when my spirit is talking. But for most people, the two are confused. And sometimes merge together. I know sometimes when the spirit says what my soul is reacting. And I know sometimes what my soul is saying. And so that ability to know will help you. Because your soul learns gradually, your soul could go to process, but the way your spirit man learn is instant. Think about it, when you go to heaven, how long do you think it will take you to play a heavenly instrument? Instant. Instant. Right, just impartation. And then when, when you're assigned to a planet to take care, how long do you think you will take to know everything that's going on in that planet? Instant! Because it's a spiritual way of knowing. Whereas, to know everything about the planet will take us many lifetimes. So one, one day, I, I was reading about this. Of course, I admire this guy, I salute this guy. He's an ornithologist. He studies ducks. He spent 20 years with ducks. ducks. Yeah, duck. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> I say, oh my God. 20 years with duck. And, and, and he was writing a book about what he learned because he was going to spend another 20 years. So he's the duckologist. <laughs> and his name might be Duck Vedder. <laughs> but 
in terms of, I just want to say, it took so long for us to acquire knowledge. But I mind him because this is the guy who discovered imprinting. Yes. It takes us very long to learn that. So he discovered one piece of knowledge the rest of us can use. And uh, so the same way, like, you know, or talking about Christianity, you know the first Christians who produced a concordance? That's all. Their job is produce concordance because no computer. You know how Robert Young produced a concordance? Every word he counts. Every word. You know how long it takes to count every single word in the Bible? And to put them, how many does are there? Do you know how many does there are in the, in, the, in the Bible? He knows. I don't know. And I don't want to know. Because I'm not studying the word the in the English. But he, he has to record all them. Then he compile together. By the time he finished, about time to go home. But today on a computer, you can do the whole thing in five minutes. It's life's work. So you've got more technology. And so, spirit knowing, soul knowing is two different things. And sometimes it begins with these frequencies that you become aware of. And, and sometimes when you pray, you could feel a certain sense of um, light around you. Uh, and just let it keep flowing. Let, just absorb the light until you gain the frequency of the light that is there. Uh, what else is he saying to us tonight besides the revelation, the verses that he's giving? Ah, the other thing that he's saying is that he also gives some of you uh, pictures of animals or visions of animals. So some of you might think you're gone crazy, you know? As you pray, build altar, build altar, suddenly a goose goes by you. <laughs> you know, not, not, not a real dog that came behind me earlier. <laughs> okay. But a goose goes by and you're wondering, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> right. But the Holy Spirit say, hey, it's me. Right. So, uh, what's the goose? And that's the thing. It's for you to figure out by tomorrow morning. Of course, none of you saw any goose. Uh, but uh, you might have seen some animals or things that you might have to figure. Hey, Tony, you saw any an animals uh, today? Any flesh animals? Yeah. Anything in between during the traveling? Like suddenly you say, hey, why this animal is there? Or just flash into your mind? No, I'm not. I, do you see any animals there? Eh? Oh, what do you dream? A first night at Ephesus. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, so Nelly has a dream. No, no. Many people, assembly. assembly of people uh, uh, in a dream. And your late husband was leading, mm -hmm. and then you were following, behind and then behind you were young people. And you say it's a very strange dream. <laughs> what, what, what this procession is. Okay, so uh, uh, that one is like. Your husband and you is uh, your generation. Behind you is the second generation after you. And that is the procession of those following along uh, in the next wave that's coming. But there's some reason why you got that dream. Yeah. The white. What struck you in the vision? Okay, how come your dad and he appeared? Because your husband represents the first generation. And you're the end of the first generation. And then behind you is the second generation. And I believe you're a calendar. A calendar that earmarked the transition between the first to the second generation. That means um, 
on the day you go to be with the Lord, is why any first generation that remain would have the gift and the grace of God to remain to the rapture. The rest are all second generation. There's some sort of calendar. Uh, anyway, as a group, anyone seen animal things or things you do not understand? So, I just had a thought. The first day at Ephesus, we saw a lot of cats. Cats. The real ones? Uh? Real cats. Yeah. Uh, Ephesus. Uh, puppy, chubby, chubby cats. Uh, including uh, two that we saw just dogs. now. Huh? More cats than uh, yeah. dogs. And, and something strike you. No, the, the, the thought just came about ah, animals. Ah, yes, just about animals. when you were at Sardis, you had dogs, right? Yes. Real dogs. Yes. At Ephesus, we had real cats. All over, All over the place, ah. Uh. Okay. okay. I don't know who reared them, but I think... They're wild. They're wild. Yeah, wild. I've been to Turkey many times. Yeah. There are dogs all over the place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, nice, 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 nice dogs, but they're friendly, and they're all... Every place you find some dog somewhere. And they seem to take care of the dogs very well here. But cats, not so many. Yeah. Ephesus, yeah. Okay. Ephesus got a lot of cats. Okay. The last trip also, we saw a lot of cats. A lot of cats. Okay. Uh, that's just a phenomenon. And uh, unless. Uh, <laughs> I love it because the. Uh, uh, in a symbolic way, the angel of Philadelphia say, this is not it. Okay. Yeah, okay. So don't look too much into the natural things, but more to the spiritual side. Uh, enjoy the natural and uh, things that is trying to impart for each one of you tonight. Now, yes? Okay. Is that a word? Okay. And uh, lights. Any other ones or you see lights so that we can help you with some interpretation? Besides uh, Alpha, yeah? you saw? Yeah, I, I have a question for you. Um, I wanted those who saw to share that they saw lights. Is it open window or closed window? Uh, is there a difference between the two? No. Whether you saw lights, open vision, closed vision, eyes open, eyes closed, uh, is the method you see. So whatever you see, if it's not a natural one, but it's still there, uh, consider it as an impartation. You saw red also. In front of the altar, Thaya Tira, you saw red. I also know a uh, close vision. I know some of you saw reddish colors in uh, the altar. How many of you saw red? Can you put out your hand? Red, red colors, red, 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 a fiery red, fiery red. Is it there are many of you that saw it? You saw fire. You saw fire. A column of fire. So, a fire, correct. Uh, there was a column of fire over the altar. Yes. Then as I continued to close my eyes, then I saw the red, it just red. And then for a long while, it turned to yellow. That's why when you show the chart, <laughs> it makes sense. Yes. yes. So it was graduating into another frequency. Uh, yeah. Have a look at the chart again. This will help you all. Look at the rainbow chart and see where yellow is and where red is. Can you see that? The progression from red to yellow moves you upward into, uh, into from, 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 from peace, you go upward, slowly upwards, and you go into love, and then you go into the yellowish scale, using the rainbow chart, that you actually has gone into the middle part which looks yellowish and golden. So some of you, you saw golden rays. 
you are seeing the yellowy section. So you move. And so when you saw the lights changing, it was like your frequency was being tuned. Being tuned. Slowly being tuned. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this chart, if you go and analyze deeper, is the on the Google search, you put rainbow frequency, you see this one, uh, the first one, and then you see the other one under dark light, and uh, under uh, black background, I mean. Then you can see the, a, bit of the, uh, a bit of the pinkish, near the, near the violet, uh, a bit of the pinkish, and that is where your pinkish is. So this chart can go, and then you know where you're going. Now, you need to know what you normally see from what you occasionally see. Okay, here's the thing. You will always be a certain color as your default. You will always have a default color. There's no such thing as no, uh, no color. So when people say, I see black, black. And you know what black is, right? <laughs> what is black? Nothing. Absence of light. Thank you. Okay. It's the absence of light. Thank you very much. And then through time, uh, because I'm training you into progressive uh, open vision, because I realize open vision can be trained. And like any Bible school, Sometimes it might take years, but some people learn faster than others. Some people are more natural at it than others. But don't, don't panic, you know. Some people might take seven years because they're studying part-time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, studying part-time, spending time with God, la, I consider. And so, uh, your frequency can change through time. So, what you have is your default frequency, don't you? So, the next time you pray, when you close your eyes, most likely you won't see black, black anymore. You will always see red, get comfortable with it. And then after you see red, you just enjoy, and then it will move the vision. Then after sometimes you might see different colors, different colors. And uh, then, as you go through all the scale of colors, as you go through all the scale of colors, you notice you go from the a lower to the higher, uh, and the more and more. In the this, uh, you see the amplitude, the wave line is, is, is less than, those are faster one, is the, the frequency is faster. A wave line frequency are actually slightly different thing, you know, in terms of amplitude. But looking at the frequency, how frequent it, it complete one cycle, and um, you notice that the higher one is the purplish color, bluish and purplish. Now, what happens if you are trained in all colors? You see the whole thing clearly. You see the what? You see the whole thing clearly. You see the whole thing clearly. Ah yes, when all the colors are working, you straight away go into, you can see anything you want. Except their different type of vision. Now, what you see and how you receive it is another thing. Like she asked a question. When you close eyes, when you open eyes, you know, or when you dream, uh, is there any different? No, that's just mode of receiving. Mode of receiving. Like whether you want to eat rice with a spoon or with a fork or with a chopstick. Rice is still rice. Right? And uh, so it's just your style of conveying the rice to your mouth. And then, of course, there are different types of rice. Japanese rice is sticky, so it's easy to eat with a chopstick. You know, try the porridge rice of the Chinese. <laughs> you, know, you might starve to death before, you know, you have one in your spoon. And so, uh, there also diff rice is still, but different, frequent con uh, different consistency. And that is what I talk about, how uh, visions can be of different intensity. The intensity of the rice, if you don't mind, use natural things so you can convey the meaning. 
how you receive it, whether closed vision, open vision in a dream, or mental vision, or, or, or faint vision, or see from the corner of your eye, from the corner of this eye, from the center of your eye, or when your eye look like the inu, wolf go, the or go, and then you see vision. These are all different modes. It's how you eat your rice. Okay, chopstick, spoon, fork, uh, or you just eat the right <laughs> like a caveman, you know, or use your hands, you know, roll it into a ball, uh, use your hand to eat your rice. Actually, in some countries, they eat rice with their hands. Must be right hand, not left hand. Because left hand is for washing themselves, right hand is for scooping. And so it's always the right hand. And they told me it can be more delicious. I've tried it on a banana leaf. It seems to be quite delicious, but need more scientific application, analysis. And so, uh, how you eat the rice, doesn't matter. So even if your vision is just a thought, your vision is just a glance, or sometimes like a flash, you seem to see something in a flash, these are all methods. It does not make what you see less spiritual, or less anointed, or less powerful. It does not. It does not. Then the other thing is the consistency of your rice. Different types of rice. For those of you who are not rice eaters, you don't realize how much and many types of rice. Rice can also be multicolored. Black rice, brown rice, mixed rice, uh, sticky rice, light rice, and uh, fluffy rice. And you know, basmati rice is fluff, fluffy a bit and all kinds of rice, tiny grain rice, big grain rice, you know. All these are in the spiritual world, uh, like how you are energized to see the vision. All visions have to be energized. Visions can be energized in the last grouping by your spirit man. Your spirit man is right now seeing, but whether your spirit man can convey to your soul is the problem. Your spiritual eyes are already open, a newborn babes. So your spirit is seeing, but whether your spirit can convey it and pass it on to your soul. Or your soul can line up with your spirit to catch it. So your spirit man, and your spirit man itself got many energizing levels. Weak, strong, uh, powerful, or oh, well-fed spirit, skinny spirit, and uh, <laughs> skinny spirit. Uh, I saw my own skinny spirit, man, and that's how I learned to meditate. So uh, uh, that is uh, one energizing source. When your guardian angel, usually your guardian angel, also energizes you, so your spirit man is already there. You got another energizing. It changes the consistency of your rise. And then, when the Holy Spirit also energizes, which is a gift of visions, there's another level of energizing. And so the more energizing, the, the more the rice becomes uh, very uh, strong and strong in consistency. And, uh, so your vision becomes clear, very, very clear. I, my first vision, I saw Jesus while I, while I was sitting at the back of the auditorium, or uh, three quarters of the way back. So the auditorium is shaped this way, like a theatre. And then there's a big platform, and uh, there was a preacher preaching. I was sitting about three quarters of the way back, looking at the whole thing. Then when the altar call was, was going on and everybody go forward, it was also a healing service. And it was going on, at that time, the preacher was Benson, Benson Idahosa. So he went to Penang and it was a, I was a seminary student and was attending the meeting. And then he was looking, and I was looking, just looking, not trying to do anything, looking at the meeting, you know, uh, a touch that so many people are safe. And then suddenly, I see this greenish color figure above the whole place, like way tall. Then I look carefully, I, it was an image of Jesus. It was an image of Jesus. So I was like seeing a huge Jesus above the crowd. 
So I said, okay. Then I went back, very fascinated. Then I went and asked the Lord, Lord, I know that's like seeing you, but why is my vision green color? And of course, the Lord can be humorous, or the Holy Spirit can be humorous, and it's because you're still green. <laughs> you know the English meaning, right? <laughs> you're, still, you're still new, right? kind of thing. And uh, actually, now I look back, I understand, it's because I was still being tuned to see vision. And so through time, uh, you know how the first computer screen is also green color? I think God used that format on me. He only gave me a green monitor. <laughs> anyway, I remember those days when you see you got to type on a green monitor, the words are green color. Oh, those are really the first morning, first computers. And at least the, the later ones got to be a color. And so, through time, God was tuning me and progressing me through all those other things. So sometimes God tune you in one particular area to receive. And uh, then sometimes, uh, it's not just your guardian angel, but God send you a ministry angel with a specialization to do certain things. And uh, with that comes a different manifestation on you. And your vision might change where whenever he's energizing, uh, it's totally different. It's another different level, a different consistency of your rise. So I hope this helps you tonight as you absorb and understand what God is doing in your life. Pray over it. The spiritual world is real. It is very real. And it intersects into the natural. Whenever it intersects, it's the most wonderful experience you have. Imagine feeling the healing of the Lord from an incurable sickness and feeling your body. Do you know that if you're healed and touched and it's manifest, you literally can feel it? How did the woman with the issue of blood knew that she was healed? She didn't knew it. Ask a sick person to know when they are well, they know it. And instantly she was healed even though she suffered many years ailment and it was incurable. When the energizing and Jesus himself felt it going through his body. So there was a manifestation, a tangible manifestation. It is most wonderful. When I was transported in following this move, I think it's most wonderful. And the whole car and the people in the car were transported 100 kilometers. It is a most wonderful feeling knowing that what you have acted upon based on visions, based on downloads, is real enough to physically change a whole physical environment or to grow a new arm or new leg, then you know how real the spiritual is. But we will have to spend a lot of time in the spiritual until we learn to bring it into a physical reality in a controlled way in a way that the Lord determines, then you begin to enjoy more and more the impact of the spiritual world. Yeah. But in the ministry, I can tell you a lot of things I know very real. Like for example, uh, when, you know, in a ministry, you depend on offerings. And I notice that sometimes when there's no offering, there's no offering. Then when there's a time God blessing, and the people who give don't know each other. Then suddenly it comes like raining. Pa, 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 pa. And then after that, it stops. Then you know uh, angels are working behind. So when the angel wants to supply your needs, he actually goes out and he's energized to do those things. And he might speak to a thousand people and a hundred people obey. And you know how real the spiritual is. And because when you look at it, sometimes you pray for something, two or three people who don't know each other give the offering for, for the thing and the sum you add up is just enough for what you want to do. Who in the world coordinate that? You know angels are coordinating. Or the coincidence of a group of things leading to healing, a miracle, you know angels are coordinating. And you know how real it is. The spiritual is very real. 
Yes. Coronavirus in the plane. Everybody will look at you and please change my seat. Yeah, so mm -hmm. what I did is I, I took herbal medication. And, uh, but after the smaller prayer walk, yeah, I sensed that like I was here. Okay. It just so disappeared. Came, yeah. yeah. And then after you're sharing about, you know, you put at the door as never mind. <laughs> so, so I thought, okay, I shall not. As a backup, yeah. Yes. Also, that is actually a test. Cold. Yes, that's a different cold. Oh, mm. okay. It looks similar but different. Okay, okay. Because I felt I was healed. Not yes, you were. Yes. So that one was different. Oh, okay. How clever the enemy! Yeah. Try to make you think, hey, it's coming back again. But actually, that was a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you should have seen uh, Colleen. He's right with me and his nose is running, you know. <laughs> And uh, then I know he's not sick. It's just his reaction to the cold. Yeah. And, uh, and then when he gets me in the warm, he just disappears and he's alright. So uh, each of our body reacts differently. Praise the Lord. Yes. Going back to the animals. Huh? <laughs> Go to animals. Okay, I love animals. When, when one time when Deborah was praying, so I saw the silhouettes of the three animals. One is a seal, the head was raised by the time. The second one, you can just see the head and two front paws. Uh, just the, see the head and the two front paws. Yes. Okay? And the third animal is a turtle. The, the first turtle. one is a seal, the head and the two front no, paws. No, the head is raised very high. The head is raised very high, but still the seal's seal. paw. No, no, just a seal. Then? No okay. Paws. The no paws. The one is I see the head and the two front paws. Kind of head or I, what? I, I do not know. Can you see oh, you the cannot see the head, but you see the yes, two front paws. No, what animal? The front paw look like what? Bear. Huh? Bear. Probably, probably dog. You know that kind of paw. Like Cute little doggy paws. <laughs> I wouldn't say doggy, but it's that kind uh, of thing. You know that doggy paw are cute. Then you got, the, you got the tiger paws. <laughs> and the dragon claws. <laughs> right, okay, okay. So you know why it's not. Yeah. Right, okay. And the third one is actually a turtle. Okay. okay. It's interesting. Oh, wait, when was this happening? Uh, during one of the Sunday, you know, during the Sunday morning, the prayer session, I ran up to pray. Uh, oh, give up an hour to pray. Uh, oh, the morning, last Sunday in, in Singapore, a couple of weeks. Uh. Okay, okay. There are many directions we can go, depend on her prayer. Uh, nations can sometimes come as animals, right? The book of Daniel. And then uh, our recent downloads uh, where I think Korea was a tortoise and a raccoon or something. So, so nations can look like animals. Uh, the other thing that can look like animals are soul qualities. Soul qualities of different people. And uh, then a third category where uh, animals can be used are more like uh, the attributes of the animals, uh, parts of it are coming together. And so the last one was a tortoise, right? And so it depends what she was praying. But if she was praying about China virus or whatever things that are there, or some uh, intercessory thing. So it's just a spiritual warfare prayer. Uh, it might have to do with national things that are being prayed for. And you. Doggy bone? What? Dogs are coming out. Right? Okay, rewards. Rewards. Yeah. Not that we are, we are dogs, but. <laughs> But the doggy bone is, uh, in terms of 
When you see animals, when you dream about animals, you got to ask God about the animals. Normally, under your personalized dream, the animals represent different aspects of your soul. So, doggy bone is like reward for, for, for faithfulness. And dog is a symbol of faithfulness. A giraffe is an animal that can eat the leaves of trees which all the anim animals do not have. And a giraffe is an animal that has developed so that it can look above all the other animals and reach things that are way above. So when someone in the soul reaches out into some area that is beyond what most people reach out, then one might feel that that person's soul is like the giraffe. Or if it's the attribute of giraffe, that means that one is reaching to things that are unreachable to other animals, the other people. So the message got several possible interpretations. Yes. An emu with a platypus bill. So uh, both platypus and emu are actually Australian uh, kind of animals. And uh, of course, the platypus is also in New Zealand. And um, uh, it would be something to do with the animal or something to do with um, uh, the attributes of the animal. Attributes of the animal. So a platypus is one of the mammals that uh, looks like a duck, but it's not a duck. And an emu looks like ostrich, but not an ostrich. And um, so the combination of both looks like a combination of two soul qualities. And uh, so you got to search God, what do the soul qualities of the animal mean? I believe it has a personal application. And depend on your context. You all know the, the rule of interpretation of dreams, like all you receiving dreams are healing. When do you have that dream, by the way? Oh, that's months ago. Okay, months ago is different. I thought recently that is applying to the thing. Uh, the rule of interpretation of dream is you must straight away ask when did the dream occur. So when the dream occur is an important rule before you can interpret. And because that will tell you what caused the dream. Uh, the dream comes from somewhere. And what was in your mind when you dream and you fall asleep. Uh, so that is one of the important key to interpretation. The other key to interpretation is usually what does that animal mean to the dreamer? Not to the interpreter, but to the dreamer. And uh, then apply it. Uh, then of course you got the Bible uh, patterns of animals that we have. Uh, it's in the teaching or interpretation of dreams. So uh, uh, in terms of that, I believe that there was uh, uh, something that you experience or you saw or you you're feeling on the on the attributes of the animals that apply to your situation four months ago four months is a bit uh, you can remember the context is easier to interpret but without the context uh, we can only analyze hey Gmail Ah, uh, his words are that uh, each one, the Lord is speaking to each one of us different things. And uh, besides uh, the scripture words he's giving, uh, besides the revelation, that is not, the, the normal one is the revelation we are, we are coming into. Uh, there are some new things that God is showing us that we meditate and prepare ourselves for tomorrow. And to understand what God is speaking to you. And a different, different. Each person has specific things that God is uh, bringing forth. For Laodicea, uh, the the uh, the 
the angel or Laodicea, uh, he's in the background there. The moment you mention him, I can see where he is. Uh, he's in the background, but he says he does not want to say anything until this one finish. I think it's the angelic protocol. So the angelic protocol is that one angel is working, the other do not disturb. That is why actually, this morning, as I mentioned about four something, I met the angel of Tayatira. I did not meet the angel of Sadis. And only after we finish Tayatira, and I don't know what will come out when we go to Sadis, because they each got protocol. When one is working, the other does not disturb. And then, uh, only when we went to Sadis, and, as, uh, and when we finished with Tayatira, and we started the journey there, in my spirit, I was asking and seeking, Lord, what is there for us? What's the next thing for? And, and it did not come until when we were praying. I knew that we just had to go there and pray information. The moment I stepped there, I already straight away know this is not the place. Because, and then the Lord will give me the thing. Like in Philadelphia and here and other places, you won't find a single ruin. The only real ruin is the one in the Odyssey, which will be quite fascinating. Uh, because the churches, number one, are house churches. And they didn't grow very big. And they didn't have an actual meeting place, not like in Ephesus. And so, uh, in the fourth century, they built the Sadist thing. Uh, but that is 400 years already. In Paul's time, they might just be homes. So I did not know, I knew that that was not it, but I just flow along, see what we want to do in the place. And he did appear in the end, and he's just watching us. And then when we went to pray in formation, then only he started manifesting and stood up on the hill. So, and I just, we just pray, finish. And when he was in the middle of the prayer, he was really telling me, uh, you must come up here. Of course, my soul also says, now the soul also got used to think, my soul also says, uh, check, can check whether can be altered there also. But not my spirit. Because the soul is, you know, keen to be altered. And uh, then, uh, my spirit heard him, and my spirit was just quiet. And then when we climb up there, um, uh, to see what it's like, then sometimes my spirit can be taken and I can see what it's like. But at that time, God did not do it. He just wanted to walk up by faith. And when we walk up in obedience, uh, and then I knew we just gathered there to pray. When we gathered there to pray, uh, where he stood before, and he was uh, uh, up above us. And uh, then when we were praying, a lot of things started happening. And the sky is above us. And that was where the hand appeared, uh, halfway through. And I, then only, when did you see the hand appear how, in the middle of the prayer? When you were below. That's very interesting. Yeah. So you saw the hand. A transparent being. Pastor Elijah said he saw a transparent being. Yeah. I could see also transparent. And, but it was small. I felt they, they were falling. And that's why I would call my This, like, is it the same thing? It is the same thing seen from different anger. So in Smyrna, you saw the transparent thing? Yeah. Okay. In Taitira also. So in your hand, so in Taitira, you saw the thing? Lights? Yes.
and uh, I would learn small, and I would go and uh, where I would go and go and see. Okay. Same thing, spirit being. It was God's way of telling you that what you saw is a spirit beings working. So the sparkle of light could be a spirit being. Remember, spirit being joined to each one of you. So the side effect on you is you seeing this and being merged and energized. So the merging is taking place like uh, Jewel mentioned that she felt the merging. And uh, so that is taking place. So we got uh, tomorrow 8 a.m. I think he did say 8 a.m. Right? 8 a.m. Uh, to be breakfast at 7. 8 a.m. we leave uh, for our last trip back uh, uh, to, 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 to Bergamos after Philadelphia and Laodicea. So get ready for altar building tomorrow and uh, have a good rest in the Lord. And remember tomorrow night, no meeting. You go home, and so there are no instructions. I said you spend time with the Lord, wait on the Lord, prepare yourself for February the night. And so have a good night. Let's uh, give God thanks and say a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for all that you're doing. We know, Lord, that you're speaking things in our heart and into our life so that we can know you even as you have known us from the beginning. We ask that our knowledge of you, our capacity to know you and hear you will increase. We are here, Father God, in obedience to the angel instruction to come to this place to receive an impartation for the next seven years. So here we are, O oh God, seal this in the heart and life and cause us to merge with all the spirit beings, to merge with all the angels, to merge with the Holy Spirit, to merge with you, Jesus, and you, Father, so that we are one and we can become all you want us to be, to do all you want us to do in your perfect will. Let it be unto us according to your spoken word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.